This is the second of two videos on the history of the Arbiter. Click here or check the description box to view part one on Hidden Xperia's channel. The Sangheili had been betrayed. The Great Schism had begun. In light of the Prophet's betrayal, the Sangheili had an uncertain future before them. However, before any such concerns could be addressed, a more immediate threat required their attention, the Flood and the threat of the Halo Array. Under the leadership of the Arbiter, Thel Vadim, the Sangheili formed an alliance with humanity for the common goal of breaking the Covenant once and for all. The Sangheili formed a new fleet, the Fleet of Retribution. Under the leadership of Fleetmaster Urtas Vadum, the fleet was tasked with cauterizing the surface of Installation 05 and ending the threat of the Flood. Meanwhile, the Arbiter, accompanied by Commander Miranda Keys and Sergeant Avery Johnson, headed to Earth in an attempt to stop the Prophet of Truth from accessing the Ark and activating the entire Halo Array. Taking advantage of the Forerunner Dreadnought Slipspace Wake, the group was able to make it back to Seoul relatively quickly. In addition, with the Prophet of Truth heading to Earth at relativistic speeds due to concerns about the Spartan stowaway, they even landed ahead of Truth and the Chief. On November 17th, however, the Dreadnought made its descent towards Earth's surface, during which the Chief bailed out, using a part of the ship as a heat shield. The Arbiter accompanied the recovery team and, after some brief hostilities between himself and the Chief, went to work aiding human forces in stopping Truth's plans. With the Chief recovered, the UNSC planned to make a hole in Truth's anti-air defense and hit him with everything they had left. Together, the Chief and the Arbiter took out the local AA Wraiths, then made a run at a Mantis AA turret. As soon as the turret was taken out, Fleet Admiral Hood was able to make his final run against the Dreadnought. Sadly, it was all but ineffective. Truth was able to activate the Forerunner artifact that had been uncovered, opening a portal to the Ark. Immediately after, another target appeared, a Flood-infected ship that had managed to slip by the Sangheili blockade by Installation 05. The Chief and Arbiter went to work clearing out local Flood forces, making their way towards the crashed ship, hoping to overload the engine core just as the Chief had done on Alpha Halo. Luckily, the Fleet of Retribution appeared, having pursued the Flood ship. Unfortunately, the news they brought wasn't all good. High Charity had been fully converted into a Flood Hive, and the Fleet of Retribution, a fleet of hundreds, had been severely devastated. With the help of their newly arrived Sangheili allies, the Chief and Arbiter continued forward to the Flood ship. Before arriving, however, they were informed that the Sangheili had detected Cortana on board and the Chief had a new objective. When the Chief went in to recover Cortana, the Arbiter and a contingent of Sangheili remained outside to stop any Flood that wanted to pursue. After the Chief recovered her, he and the Arbiter were transported to the flagship Shadow of Intent, while the rest of the Sangheili fleet began glassing the area to eliminate any Flood infestation. On board the Shadow of Intent, it was discovered that what the Chief had recovered was a simple recording, informing them that the Gravemind and High Charity were headed to Earth. Luckily, on the other side of the portal was a way to stop the Flood without activating the rings. In light of this, Commander Keys, Sergeant Johnson, and Master Chief would take the forward onto Dawn and accompany the Sangheili through the portal. The remaining human forces would defend Earth. Once at the Ark, the Chief immediately deployed to the surface while the Arbiter remained with his Sangheili brethren. They briefly reunited at the Cartographer to devise a plan of attack against Truth. They were soon interrupted, however, and while the Chief headed to the lower floors for extraction, the Arbiter hijacked a Banshee to take to the skies. Now equipped with proper intel, Commander Keys led a three-pronged attack against the shield generators around the Ark's Citadel. The Chief and some Marines would take out one tower generator, the Arbiter and Leeds a second, and Johnson and another group of Marines would hit the third. The Chief and Arbiter were both successful in their missions, but Johnson found himself held up. While the Chief went to the third tower, the Arbiter remained outside, coordinating local Sangheili to defend the tower and prepare for the final assault. As the final barrier fell and Urtas moved the Shadow of Intent to strike the final blow, the Gravemind and a heavily damaged High Charity slipped in, raining Flood down on the Ark and severely crippling Shadow of Intent. The assault was now a ground game. Fell took to the air to protect Monitor 343 Guilty Spark from being captured by the Flood, while the Chief cleared a path on the ground towards the Citadel. The two reunited at the entrance and made their way inside. However, it did not look like they would make it before Truth would get the chance to activate the rings. Miranda Key busted her way in, hoping to save Johnson, but when she saw the overwhelming odds, she attempted to kill herself and Johnson before Truth would have a chance to activate the rings. Sadly, she was killed by the Prophet before she had the chance. Truth then began the initiation sequence as the Arbiter-in-Chief made it to the top of the Citadel, though an army of brutes stood between them and Truth. To their surprise, the Flood appeared, and the Gravemind offered a temporary truce in order to stop the firing of the Array. Though they were successful in their mission, the Gravemind turned on the Chief and Arbiter as soon as the Array was shut down. We trade one villain for another. 
After beating Beth a local flood infestation, the chief and arbiter discovered a replacement halo ring. With the threat of the flood but no risk to Earth or Song Helios, the two decided to activate the new ring. While John went to High Charity to retrieve Cortana, who held the activation index from the first ring, the Arbiter worked with Urtas Vadum and Sergeant Johnson to evacuate all remaining UNSC and Sanghili forces from the Ark, though he would eventually infiltrate High Charity himself to help out the Spartan. With Cortana in hand, the two made their way to the unfinished Halo ring. As they cleared their way to the control room, Johnson parked the forward unto Dawn nearby for escape and made his way to join the pair. Once in the control room, the Chief handed Cortana to Johnson while he and the Arbiter watched the door. Monitor 343 Guilty Spark informed Johnson that the ring would be ready in a few days, but when Johnson instead opted to activate the ring immediately, Spark became hostile, attacking Johnson, the Arbiter, and the Chief. Though the Chief and Arbiter were able to destroy Spark, Johnson died as a result of his injuries. The Chief took Cortana and activated Halo. He and the Arbiter then moved to get off the ring and to the portal back to Earth. They barely made it to the dawn and into the portal just as the ring fired, simultaneously shaking itself to pieces. Unfortunately, the damage the Ark incurred as chunks of the ring fell to the surface destabilized the portal, causing the dawn to be ripped in half. While the Arbiter's section made it back to Earth, landing on December 23, 2552, the Chief was lost in space. With the Covenant dissolved and the remaining Sun Shayu missing, the Sanghili were at a loss for direction and leadership. Some Sanghili wanted to finish the war against humanity, while others wanted peace, and others still wanted to carry on the traditions of the Covenant to varying degrees. The Sanghili were divided, and due to centuries of Covenant leadership, were without a proper government. Upon returning to Sanghelios, the Arbiter began a campaign to encourage peace with humanity by going from keep to keep to persuade the Kaidans that peace was the best way to ensure the future of Sanghelios. However, not all Sanghili were on board. Many were convinced that humanity would retaliate given enough time to recover. One faction, the Servants of Abiding Truth, provided a particular stiff resistance to Thel's campaign. A resurrection of a pre-covenant ideology, the Servants of Abiding Truth, led by Avu Med Talcum, held to the ancient belief that Forerunner relics shouldn't be studied, simply revered. Unknown to Fel, and even to the Sanghili serving with the Abiding Truth, Talcum was being supplied by Oni, Oni hoping to keep the Sanghili busy in a civil conflict. On March 3, 2553, the Arbiter briefly visited Earth to attend a memorial service at Voi. Not long after returning to Sanghelios, however, the Servants of Abiding Truth launched an attack on the State of Bottom. Though Thel's forces eventually beat them back, partially thanks to intervention by the UNSC Infinity, the conflict would come to mark the start of the Sanghili Civil War. In the years to follow, dozens of Sanghili warlords would rise to power, claiming to lead the true Covenant or simply presenting a challenge to the Arbiter's power. Meanwhile, the Arbiter established his Swords of Sanghelios, dedicated to the unification of the Sanghili and a larger galactic peace. In the years to follow, Thel's swords would find themselves in constant conflict with Covenant loyal to the remaining San Shayum, Jirol Hane-led factions, and even Sanghili-led factions. One of the most virulent would prove to be Julum Dama's Covenant. At least one conflict with this faction led to Shadow of Intent combat ineffective. However, there were also great strides in human-Sanghili relations. Under the Arbiter's leadership, a formal ceasefire was signed in March of 2553, leading to joint military operations and research cooperatives. Through the Secret Anvil Initiative, Spartan Force and Sanghili trained in wargame simulators on board the Anvil Station, providing the UNSC with unfettered access to Sanghili weaponry. In the years following the end of the war, the Swords of Sanghelios grew in power as Thel was able to sway more and more Sanghili colonies towards his vision for a unified Sanghili race. In March of 2558, the Arbiter met with human and Jirol Hanai forces in the hopes of forging a peace between the Sanghili and Jirol Hanai. The two races had largely remained in conflict in the years since the fall of the Covenant, but a level-headed chieftain, Lydis, seemed like he may open the doors to peace. Unfortunately, the talks were interrupted by a rogue Covenant faction that had allied with the new Colonial Alliance, and no progress was made that day. By late 2558, virtually all of Sanghelios was united under the Arbiter's leadership, and he was considered the formal interim leader of the Sanghili. Now, with the Covenant breaking, it seems that Thel's dream of a unified Sanghili race may finally be within his grasp. However, with the awakening of the Guardians, a whole new threat has arrived on his doorstep, and the impact may have dire consequences. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.